has lost his life like this, uh, tells you the story of the hostility uh, of this uh, area when it comes to the police. So we had to respond as the members of the South African police. They were just doing their job. They were just patrolling. They were just there to make sure that the same communities are safe. But there is a trend that is developing that uh, around the shipping, because they were around the shipping for compliance, uh, people, they begin uh, to resist and think that they can work uh, outside the law. It's what also happened in KZN, where police went to, com to sue for compliance, and those people, they resisted. Here they did too. But up to this point, police had to collect about four people for questioning. Out of those four people that were questioned, one now has been arrested, has appeared in court this morning, a 32-year-old, will appear again on the 9th. There are several things that we believe they are there to give us a correct person. He's got a bloody T-shirt that will take it for DNA, but the cellular of the young man, 28-year-old from this house, was found to that guy. Uh, who has appeared in court. So he's, he's linked on the matter. But we have ordered the police, and I'm ordering the police to say there were several of these people. They must be found, and they must be hunted and found. Doesn't matter where they are found, doesn't matter how they are found, but police will have to bring them dead or alive and make sure that those people, they get punished. Listen to the members of the family, especially the brother and the mother of the, of the wife. Uh, their pain is a pain we share, though it can't be the equal pain. The call that has been made by the brother for the state to be more harsher, to be more protective to the members of the South African police, but also to be more harsher and make sure that victims of the violence are also taken on board rather than converting the perpetrators to the, to, the, to the beneficiaries of the system. For instance, raise the issue to say the brother is dead, got two kids, they might lose all the benefits, even this, this, the, the, the kids can lose going to school. But if that person, if he's sent to a long time, can study until he gets PhD. It's a feeling that the family has to say, maybe sometimes the state is more sympathetic, is more softer to the perpetrators rather than the victims. So I've been sent then to go and speak to the government, to go and speak to my colleagues to say, can we protect the victims, both the victims like police, but also they raise the issue of the gender-based violence to say you find that the perpetrators are given a better treatment by the system rather than the, rather than the victims. So that's a thing that we're going to take. For now, we are looking the case, how it's going in court, and we expect to arrest more people on this and make sure that uh, those people, they are punished uh, the way that they deserve. Thanks. Thank you very much, Minister. Let's open up for some questions. Uh, I'll take the first three that I see, Ati. Minister, uh, two questions. What are you going to do to financially assist the family? You mentioned how challenging it will be going forward for the young kids. And secondly, for the firearms we see for the hardest. Well, the firearms have not been received, uh, Ati. Uh, that's why these other guys that were questioning were still keeping them. Uh, we believe that uh, having established that this other guy, uh, the one that appeared in court, is linked, uh, will get our way. He will help us to find out it, to receive the firearms. But uh, those firearms have not been retrieved. Thank you. Uh, officially, uh, when our police, they die, on, on, the, on the line of duty. Uh, kids are taken on board when it comes to, when it comes to uh, the, their schooling. Uh, we have an often a trust uh, of our members in the South African police, and we believe we'll take them on board on that one. But uh, both of them will be granted an official funeral, which means the state put some resources in their, in their burial because they died on duty.
Thank you so much, Minister. Let's take one uh, from Ronald. What are some of the other contingency plans in place, not only dealing with this matter, but other matters? We've seen quite a number of violent crimes in the province. And is it high time to perhaps enforce uh, another lockdown, have the army in some of our spots? Well, the <clears throat> working with the army uh, doesn't need to be locked down. Uh, you remember that we had uh, permission to work with the army here when the lockdown came, and the, the army then were part of the lockdown. Uh, I did speak to the Minister of, of Defence uh, if we still have to follow all the protocols to have an army. Indeed, uh, the, this province has been quite unstable uh, in terms of crime. You, you know what has happened in Michel's Plain, I'll be going there. You know what has happened in Nyanga. Uh, the, the tax people who know what happened in Delft. So it's, it's, it's an area that we'll have to look at it with an extra eye. Two provinces, I've seen, they are really problematic. This is the one and the case at end. The call may be uh, that we need to, to, to make is that at all levels we need to work together on this matter. I, I, was, I was so much impressed about what the Premier of Gauteng did. Uh, he put a lot of resources in the South African police, working with them, put actual 100 cars, new cars for the... So this thing of, 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 of not working together, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really pained, uh, maybe I'm wrong, that up to this point, the visits to this community by the provincial government has not taken place. Uh, it tells me that maybe we've got a different posture when it comes to fighting crime and all that. Maybe that's one thing. I heard that the MEC would like to meet me. I would definitely like and see how do we put resources together and work together to protect the Western Cape. Western Cape people are people of South Africa. It's nothing different from them that they need to be treated otherwise. And there's nothing different that they can't be protected and protected by all levels of the government. But I agree with you, we need to do an extra here. SNDF has not been called back, so let's sit down with the Minister of Defense that and they said maybe the President extend on those matters. Thank you, Minister. Minister, talking about working together, there's this multi-tier task team around the alleged extortion racket at Clay in Cape Town. Please give us an update. Where is this task team? <coughs> Why have um, some of the investigations yielded so far? Well, you, you remember that you came here, that task team exists. It's unfortunate that when things are not happening, there is a lot of noise. When they happen, there is, there is silence. That team exists. Even somebody from the office of the Premier, from the office of the, of, of, of the, uh, of the local government, they sit on the team to do and give and work on the data. But when it comes to operations, when it comes to operations, uh, they can't sit there, police will have to do. Has yielded results of the team. Uh, there's been this allegation to say we're only arresting sardines, we don't deal with sharks. Uh, you know what has happened here. Top, top guys have been arrested in this province, more than 20 of them. I mean, top guys have been arrested. We hope that the court will help us, will take them and process them and don't get paid and don't get short sentences taken through. So that is working. But besides, the police here are really doing their work. I'm sure you have heard, you have heard about the biggest bust that happened here in Western Cape. Uh, the, the drugs where 10 foreign nationals have been arrested and more than half a billion, 573 million estimated drugs were busted here. We have, about three weeks ago, we had another bust that was coming from Johannesburg of the Mandrax coming here, which was 15.7 million. <coughs> there is a, <coughs> that's another issue to say. This province is targeted, both national and international, by the drug lords. Maybe hence the problem that people, they die on the on Michel's play, they die in death, they die in, the, in, the, in all, all other all places, your Clyfontein, because it's targeted. So it's important that the provincial government, the local government, and the national government 
we work together to protect the people of this province and forget, put aside the politics who runs here. People here, they are people, and the politics come second. What should come first is the safety of the people. Are illegal gun traders just as big, Minister, that's perhaps behind why our police officers are being targeted? Well, that, that, that's one thing, that this province is the only one that officially was given an extra resources, including the anti-gang unit, so that things like those drugs and illegal firearms those who can't separate. So we have to work on those things, work on those projects of getting those guns back and all that. So it's, it's important. Those are the projects that they are in our mind. Unfortunately, we're not going to tell you where are we in terms of planning, but they must have to uh, yield the results going forward and make sure that we work hard together with the people. That's another invitation that we're doing, that people here must join the government at all levels and help us to give us information, but also work with their own houses, with their own families to say, but you can't do this. Uh, the question of the gangsters, uh, even known gangsters here, when they die, you hear that he was not a gangster and all that. I don't want to come in that one. So our investigations will tell us how far do we go with that. Ours is to get the people that are committing crime. When people make statements, that is not ours. Ours is to work on this issue. All right.